What's up YouTube? I'm just another guy and welcome back to Gibraltar United. So it's been a while since I've done the end of season update, so apologies if I forget a few things maybe I've normally done in the past or something. But let's get into this. So I haven't seen you since December, so it's been a very long time. It's been six months of hopefully progress and we're going to go through it. So league table wise we won. Actually, it's best to go on this competition screen. League table-wise, we won. We won 14 games. I think we only conceded in four matches. I think overall we conceded five goals this season. I'll go on to proper league table in a second. We won the Rock Cup. We won the Premier Cup. We were the best team in Gibraltar by, of course, a mile. As we already know, we conceded six goals this season. Three were against Lincoln in two different games. One was against Lions, one was against Lynx, and one was against, one was against Leo FC. We scored 98 goals, which I don't think is a record for us. Oh, no, it is. Uh, it is a record. So we scored the most of the goals, and it was evident by the performances we were putting in and the score lines we were producing that we were scoring a lot of goals. Um, but... Is is standard for us now in this competition, you know, it's standard for us in the Premier League for us to just go through undefeated. The fact that we've got our third ever season where we've won all of our games is a very nice achievement, of course. And you can see the standout performers below. Three people got over a nine point something rating. Uh, Sonogo scored 29 goals in probably about 13 or probably less than less than 14 games. So he scored more than two goals a game. He's got four player match awards. Armado Cox got eight, kept eight clean sheets. It was just an extraordinary season. So we're through to the Champions League, of course. Uh, in terms of our qualification places, we haven't improved any. Of course, we didn't. I don't think we improved any last time, did we? Or was it last time? See, again, it's been a while since I've done an update. So I think, yeah, I think last season or the... Or, yeah, so this season, what this season was, is the, <laughs> what this season is, is, is the, f uh, what this season is, let's get it out this time, it's the first year where second place actually earns a second knockout, a second qualifying phase entry place into the Europa League, that's for the first time ever in the, in the league's history, so Lincoln finishing second will actually qualify later in the Europa League, elsewhere Britannia and Man 62 will also be entering the Europa League. For league, uh, for league reputation, we are now the 41st best league in Europe. We have now gone above the German third division. Uh, we are very close to the Norwegian top division. So, reputation is coming along nicely. In terms of qualification places, as I already said, you know, it was very recently that we got a sec uh, one team going into second qualifying phases. We're now up to 19th anyway in terms of qualification places. So that's now close to getting another team or another later entry stage in the Europa League. So we could very soon or maybe next year, depending on how good I and other teams in the competitions in the Europa League do, we could be seeing... You know, one team entered the second qualifying phase of the Champions League, one team entering the third qualifying phase of the Europa League, one team entering the second qualifying phase of the Europa League, and one team entering the first qualifying phase of the Europa League. So I think that's that's something we could realistically aim for for next season. So next year we could officially get granted that. So then the year after that, so two seasons from now, hopefully a team will be um we're entering the third qualifying phase after after the summer. And as you can see as well, by these ranking and the qualification places that can be awarded, we're very close to getting two teams in the Champions League. The Turkey, Czech Republic and Switzerland are the teams there. But for us to earn their qualification places, we will have to outperform them in, the, in Europe. And the way to do that is by, of course, getting ourselves to perform. You know, getting ourselves to... Um, do better than we did this year because this year was pretty much a letdown for us in terms of Europe. You know, we we normally get past the group stages, so it wasn't a good year for us. But the fact we've gone up, the fact that we've grown a little bit, is nice to see. And Lincoln, of course, this year actually won in Europe, so you know, hopefully they can do well entering the second qualifying phase. Although I don't really have high hopes. So uh, one other thing we can check quickly is the club's ranking. So based on coefficient points, our club is now the 29th best team in Europe. And we need to start reflecting that. We really do. From the Champions League of the past two years, for the past three years, actually, I should say, French teams have won it. So, oh, not three years, sorry, but <laughs> the past two years, Monaco have won it. So, oh, there is a draw, but I don't, I didn't want to see that. So if we go to the final, you can see that, God damn it. 
The final was Monaco versus Napoli. The year before that is Monaco versus Lyon. The year before that it was PSG Juventus. The year before that PSG Man City. So France and the French domestic teams are growing. They really are. They've become the dominant force. Like I said, this year's final was PSG versus um, Monaco. I don't know. Actually, no, it wasn't. It was Napoli. I thought it was PSG. My bad. I'm, I guess I just saw PSG in the semi-final. So the French teams are definitely the big boys. And what I did is I compared our squad, or I tried to scout most of Monaco's players and compare them to our one. And there still is a goal for quality, as you can see by the star ratings in comparison to our squad. There is still obviously a goal for quality. But to be considered the 29th best team in Europe, we've got to be putting in better displays in the group stages, in my personal opinion. Because of the 28 teams above us, Prob uh, odds of probability are that not all of them will be in the Champions League. For example, above us, there is Stoke, Southampton, Liverpool, Arsenal, Chelsea, Man U and Man City. That's seven English teams. Now, we know for a fact three of them aren't going to be in the Europa League. So... Then we can, you can, we can knock ourselves up a few positions because we know then in terms of teams in the Champions League, we're a bit higher than that. And, it, you know, things like once we take out the teams that maybe even are above us but didn't get in the Champions League or maybe won't get past the qualifying in the Champions League, then we've got to consider ourselves a top 25 team in my opinion. And that means that realistically I want to be getting knockout football at least in the Europa League because the team size now needs to illustrate that we are actually a good team. Like I said, in terms of the coefficient points and our success in Europe this year, it was actually very small. Only 9.58 points picked up compare that to the 17 of the year before that it's uh we're looking at the wrong one there you go compared to the 17 from the year before that or the 19 from the year before that when we got euro uh, champions league knockout football we need to be improving and we need to be getting through the group stages as a bare minimum now and in fact the competitions was expected of me going into next year's champions league is first knockout round of the champions league so the pressure has been extended the pressure is being put on me and hopefully we can succeed so Going to go to the transfers now. We're going to head over to there and talk about the players we brought in during the January window. And then also talk about the people we have brought in and are letting go going into next season. So, out-wise, it was a load of loans. I guess the only key loans or the loans that I feel are noteworthy are the fact that we let John Brown go out to Dundalk. Now, I don't actually think this guy is going to have much more of a future with us. He's worth 300k. He's playing very well in Ireland. And I do actually want to sell him while he's playing well. I think... You know, we've given him a few years here with us and he's played really well, but he's not going to be good enough to get us to the Champions League level we need to be at. For the domestic level, yeah, he's fine. But I feel, like I said, with his form doing being really well, really, with his form being really good in Ireland right now, it's benefiting, it will only benefit us because his value is a little bit higher. So I'll probably look to sell this guy in the summer if I can. Of course, the loan deal will obviously affect that, but we'll hopefully get a few offers for him. I'm yet to actually ask anyone for offers, but I think he's someone we can sell for a bit of money that can be looked to be reinvested back into the squad. Elsewhere, we loaned one guy in in the winter window because, as, it's, as you see by the date there, it's the 29th of December, but the transfer window here is a bit weird. It's not actually January to February. It's like late December to late January. But it is the £3.4 million guy I spoke about previously. It's Erwin Hammerly. Hammer Hammer I think it's L-I at the end. Like I said, the font here is a little bit weird. Um, so I think it's Hammerly. I could be wrong there. And feel free to correct me. Uh, and it's not too late in this save, unlike my Rise to Fame, where a lot of them are pre-recording, and therefore I can't change my pronunciation. But this guy looks like a really good talent. He's 18 years of age. His mentals are really, really good. His determination, his flair, I really like the flair in him. Uh, his teamwork, his vision is pretty decent as well. His work rate. I think this guy is an absolute bargain for the fee we got him at. He's only 18, and despite his report saying that he's probably maxed out his potential, I mean, the potential is the same as his current ability, but I know for a fact this guy will grow, and he's already growing, With um, as you can see by the arrows here. Now, the only problem I've got is that he's currently being forced to play out wide, but I don't think that's too much of a hindrance for him. I mean, he can't necessarily play an inside forward, which, as you know, is what I want to play on this tactic, but... He's he's played out there so far. He's, he's doing pretty well. And like I say, hopefully in the future we can put him into the center because currently Sidibe is playing there. But because, like I said, we don't really have a good right-sided player. But he's doing the job out there in the league. And I know that's not a very good comparison. But 
it, it's first team football and it's developing him. This guy, like I said, is a beast. I'm sure he's going to be one of the best players, or hopefully going to be going to be the one of the players that can lead us to the Champions League glory. Because I've looked at my squad. And well, this is the only signing, so I'm going to just look at the squad quickly. But I've looked at my squad, and out of the people we have, I'd probably say maybe three of them currently who are in, or who you can see here are going to be good enough, maybe a push for to actually win the Champions League or hopefully win the Champions League with us. I think Sadib Bey is a very good talent and can definitely be someone we... Uh, definitely could be someone to win the Champions League with us if we can do it in his career. This guy, obviously, the new guy, Hamerli. I believe Morella could do it. I mean, I don't know why his stats are going down, I guess, because he's on holiday. But I really do like this guy. I'm currently forced to play him in defense midfield, which he can do quite well. So I think it suits him. But uh, ideally, he'll be playing center mid or something. But I think this guy could be a part of the team, whether he's a starter or not. Definitely a part. I think Bakayoko could be a very good player for us. I mean, he does need a lot of improvement, Bakayoko. But, I mean, he can do for now. And the other guy, who did I say? One, two... Three, four. These are four people I think can do it currently in the squad. And there's one other signing I want to talk about. And this is a guy coming in on the uh, on the 29th. So he's coming in in a few days. But yeah, Moria, I believe it's pronounced. 26-year-old Brazilian can play left midfield. Now, I know we just signed Bonnet this season. And he put in an incredible performance in the league. But I just don't think Bonnet is great. Now, if I were to compare reports with the two... Uh, because I've already got a scout report on him. I don't know why I clicked on that. If I were to repair the, repair the reports, they'd say they were the same. However, if I were to go direct side-by-side -side comparison with Bonnet, who I need to find in this bloody list. What's your name? Ugo. So we need a... It's not even in alphabetical order. <laughs> there he is. I see him in a list of names. If I were to do the side-by-side -side comparison, you can see that Moria has got a lot better technical skills. Mentally as well. He's probably got a few. I mean, determination is one there that I would have liked to have had. But in terms of the ones that Bonnet beats him on, the aggression, the composure, and the teamwork, they're only one stat behind. Another thing I would have liked was maybe a, the long shots, but again, when I'm sacrificing a, a, maybe a bit better long shot for someone who can dribble better, cross better, um, finish a little bit better, first touch is the same maybe, but technically he's a lot better, passing is better. And again, this may be in a sacrifice of a little bit, little bit of physical skill, or physical presence, maybe. But again, it's not too much difference. It's still about the same pace. Still about the same acceleration. In fact, he's got better agility. So, I'm happy with Maria coming in. But, I guess the only thing is, he's, he's quite an expensive transfer. I mean, 5.5 million up front. Uh, stuff over, only, only 69,000 over 12 months. 550 after his 50 league appearances, which is about, you know, five years for us. So, it's, it's a while before we'll ever pay that. And 505,000 pounds per league appearance after, per, uh, uh 5,500 pounds per league appearance for 10 league appearances, which, again, isn't too much money. So we can afford that. So he's coming in for a pretty hefty fee, but Bonnet does, is leaving the side as well, and we're actually making profit on him. So Bonnet signed for 1.3 million this season, did incredibly in the league, and we're selling him for 2.5, all up front. So, you know, all of that will go into Maria's fund, you know, of paying him off, which means that's only a really a 3 million transfer up front, if you want to think of it that way. So, yeah, Bonnet... Is on his way out, but I think we've brought someone in a little bit better than him. Now, in terms of squad, I mean, I'm not going to go through stats and stuff because they're pretty pointless, you know, for the league. It doesn't mean anything. But positions I still want to improve at this team are the centre-back role. I don't think Matee is good enough. I do. We do need a new centre-back. We do need a better centre-back because Matee even makes mistakes against teams from this division. And now, if you're a good enough player, if we're the team that we think we are, we don't need that. I still do want a defensive midfielder. As well, because that way it would free up Morella, Morella, whatever, to play where Bart Moen currently is, or Sadibe to drop back. I would like a right attack in mid, but that's not a priority. Like I said, I'm happy with Erwin Hamerli playing there. But to me, the, the two positions I really want are centre back, defensive mid, and I, I'm going to throw goalkeeper in there. We still need a good goalkeeper. If I were to actually order them, because uh, I said the three, but if I were to order them properly, it'd probably be. Centre back first, goalkeeper second, defence midfielder first. Because I think the th the two uh, the midfielders we've got right now, Morella Moens, Hamali, Sadibe, and the guy coming in, the new guy coming in, I think that's acceptable. The defence, the centre back role we need to improve on. I think we can get a better goalkeeper, so I'm going to be looking for a better goalkeeper. But the thing with the thing is currently is that if we want to take ourselves to the next level of football, 
we sort of need to pay the wage that the next level of football comes with, which is trans, which is wages around fifty thousand pounds a week and stuff like that. The new guy we've got coming in, our left attacking midfielder, is going to be our highest ever paid player here. He's pick up, picking up a wage of around twenty six thousand pound a week, I think twenty five thousand pound a week, which is more than our previous highest, which is eighteen thousand seven hundred and fifty pound a week. So. It's now time for this club to really start growing and really start expanding on the financial side of things. And the thing that kills me, the thing that has annoyed me most throughout this entire league season, despite getting knocked out in the Champions League, is my stupid, stupid owner of this club. So, this thing right here. It was rumoured in February that we were going to be getting a new owner. And it was going to be a tycoon. It came out of nowhere. It said, tycoon sniffing around you brought to United. I was like, oh my god, this is exactly what this club needs. I mean, we could probably do it without a tycoon. But a tycoon would make this task so much easier. We could build a new stadium. Because apparently, if the tycoon were to have taken over, he was going to invest in the club off the pitch and on the pitch. So we could have brought better players, attracted people with money. We could have improved brought our new built our new stadium we could have brought better facilities but the bloody owner sanchez who took over this club 12 years ago by the way if i show you here carl sanchez probably brought this club on a very very small amount of money is this club's probably worth 10 times more than it was back when he took over and they couldn't agree a fee for the club and the tycoon walks away it was so infuriating because like i say all them things i've listed but I also know that this, this owner isn't going to give me anything. He's willing to, lift, to listen to offers. So why would he build a new stadium? He's not. So we've got that thing there that says we're building a new stadium. When I know it's never going to happen. And I probably can't improve training facilities. Although I'll have a look. Let's see if they'll allow me to improve training facilities. It'll help boost the club's reputation. We'll increase funding. Uh, we would rather put our focus on um, bringing in first team players ready. We reject your request. See what I mean? He's not going to want to invest in this club. Our wage, our transfer budget was about six million, which I think is about similar to what it was last year. So, you know, he's still going to give us money to spend. But in terms of investing it on what the club needs, like its own fucking stadium, which is so infuriating, improving its facilities, both training and youth, improving its youth recruitment, it's proving its junior coaching, he's not going to be willing to do it. So he needs to get the hell out of this club so we can move on. So hopefully we can get a token in. That's, that's the dream. Although I'm pretty sure it's everyone's dream once they hear a takeover is in place. Uh, one thing that was stated was once the bid was cancelled back in March, it said that tycoons are still rumoured to be interested or maybe there'll be a big investment in the future. So fingers crossed there that we can hopefully get a big investor in the club soon. So one other thing here, I'm just going to look at the transfer. I'm just look at the results because we've had some incredible results this year. We've got a 12-0 victory against Lions, 11-0 against Lions, 10-0 against Britannia, 7-0 against Man 62, 9-0 against College Pegasus, 6-0, 6-0, 8-0, and 9-1 against Lynx, 8-0 against Britannia, 11-1 against Lions. You know, a, an incredible result. We didn't concede a goal in the league from the moment we started this league season, which was... Uh, from the first game, I should say, in the league season, which is here with Leo FC, we didn't concede a goal all the way down until, bang, when we conceded three against Lincoln. So, the tactic we're definitely using obviously has a lot of attacking ability in it. Uh, we've we've do, I, What I did is, after I left you off, I said I wanted to play this formation, and we did. I just changed it from that point on. And, it, like I said, it's... It's definitely showing that it can attack. And playing against the weaker opposition that we have been, it's, I guess, in a way, showing we can defend as well. Now, I'm not sure if the goals we conceded has been the lowest amount. I don't think six is, if it wants to go to the league table. I don't think six goals is the lowest amount we've ever conceded. No, five is. But it's still really encouraging. And hopefully next year, once we enter these Champions League group stage, Champions League qualifiers, we can against the slightly weaker teams in Europe, really flex our muscles, show our strength, and beat them by hopefully quite a margin. That That's a dream anyway. So, I will cut this here. I'll meet you guys back for the, the Champions League 
draw once it's been handed out. Um, when, did, when did it say that was going to come out? On the 24th. So I'll meet you back in five days. And hopefully we can get ourselves an easy draw and start pushing on back towards the group stages. All right, so it's going to be Cliftonville from Northern Ireland that we're going to be playing in the Champions League second qualifying phase. Very confident we can get a result. I mean, I don't think Northern Ireland is that great. I mean, Linfield, actually, I think, are a, are a very good team. Um, I'm surprised, actually, they've not... Oh, they came second last year. That's quite a surprise, because normally they do quite well in Europe. So, obviously, it'll be... Hopefully a good game, but a good game in terms of us, uh, not a good game in terms of them. So, yeah, we've given the favourites tag both home and away. Hopefully we'll live up to it. So, until that Cliftonville, Cliftonville game, peace out.